If you click on this video, you're probably an introvert and you're probably wondering, how do I become successful if I'm shy? Well, you guys are in luck because I literally create a free course teaching you guys exactly how to do it. And I even made slides because I'm that passionate about this topic. Now, as an introvert myself, these are the things that I've learned throughout the last 30 years that have really, really helped me become successful today. If you're an introvert and want to be successful, make sure to watch all the way through because I really think this presentation is going to be very impactful. So let's get started with the presentation. All right, so here is me on the left. This is when I was like, what, eight years old? And here's me a few years ago as I was building my current business. So the first thing I want to say is being an introvert is definitely a blessing. I'm serious. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking I'm super shy. I'm never going to have the same opportunities as people that are extremely extroverted. And I just want you guys to know that is not the truth and you need to have more confidence in your own abilities even though you are more shy. Being shy has a lot of positive benefits and I'm a living example of how those can actually help you out. So here are a couple of pictures from my childhood. This is when I was in high school. This is when I was in elementary school. And I don't know if you can tell from the photos, but I've always been extremely introverted. I used to cry when my parents sent me off to sports camps. It was hard for me to make friends. I had a lot of trouble socializing with other peers my age. And if you told my younger self some of the things that I do today, I probably would not believe you. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm a content creator. I literally do social media for a living. I drive a nice car. I have a great network of friends. I'm talking to cameras like this all the time. And yeah, I'd consider myself as living a somewhat successful life. I really do not want this video to come off as bragging because I still have such a long way to go, but I am proud of my journey. I am proud of the uncomfortable things that I've done in life to get to where I am. And yeah, if you look at the grand scheme of things, I'm just one of millions of introverted people that has done extremely well. And I really want to teach you guys how I did it and how you can do it too. I'll say that being an introvert is not all butterflies and positive things. There's definitely some things about being an introvert that makes it harder to go about life, especially if you want to get into business and stuff like that. But you just need to know how you can play on your strengths and work on your weaknesses. So this is basically like a full blueprint of using shyness as an advantage. And I'll break it down into actionable steps that you guys can literally take today after watching this video. Now, just a little bit more about myself. If you guys don't know, I'm a creator and serial entrepreneur. I was born and raised in Northern California and I graduated UCLA with a degree in psychobiology. My parents really wanted me to become a doctor. It ended up not working out for me. And after graduating college, I basically just started working for myself. I consider myself shy. I have social anxiety. I'm over thinker and I am introverted. If I were to define myself, I'd say that I'm a trier of different things. I've tried so many different things in my lifetime. A lot of them have failed. I've lost a lot of money. I've, you know, wasted a lot of time building businesses that didn't pan out. But in the end, I've tried things. Some of them have worked out. Some of them have not. And that really is why I am able to be in the position I am in right now. So step one, you guys, is you want to understand the pros of being introverted. Let's look at the definition of what an introvert is. Basically, it's a shy, reticent person. And that's probably not the best definition because reticent is a word that I don't really know. But if you look up introverted, it's going to say of denoting or typical of an introvert. Okay. <laughs> but here's the good part. Concerned principally with its own affairs, inward looking or parochial. Not sure if I'm saying that right. So I think we get the point of what being an introvert is. Now I do want to say that my definition of an introvert is not necessarily just someone that plays games all day at home and never leaves the house. That's the wrong type of introvert that you don't want to become. You basically want to become an introvert doing extrovert things still and it is entirely entirely possible so this is me in college i signed up randomly to do a photo shoot for our school clothing company and as a result i met a lot of friends and yeah i think a lot of people would consider doing this as something that is you know extroverted I also make it a really big point of mine to make friends build relationships and so while i am very introverted i know the importance of doing things that extroverted people do because yeah staying home all day playing games just browsing the internet that's really not going to get you to where you want to be in life and so yeah we definitely want to avoid that at all costs in terms of some of the actual pros of being introverted let's go Go through some of those right now. So in terms of academic performance, you know, Stephen Hawking said, quiet people have the loudest minds. I do think one reason why I was academically inclined was because I am an introvert. I don't waste time running my mouth and doing stuff like that. Instead, I'm more reserved. I like to be more inward thinking. And as a result, I think that really did help with my academic performance. Introverts are also better listeners, right? So you do talk less, but you do listen more. And guys, as you grow up, you'll realize just how important listening is to how you actually learn and progress in life. You don't learn that much by talking to people. Instead, if you listen to what other people have to say, 
you learn exponentially more. And that is one huge way of leveling up. Introverted people are also much more filtered, right? So we are less impulsive and less likely to make enemies. So I'd say that I really don't have any enemies. I try to avoid conflict and that's really good overall, right? But it also allows you to make better decisions because you're also thinking a lot. Introverts are also extremely creative, right? So you have opinions that are less influenced by the mainstream and you can often think of great ideas and sort of think outside the box. A lot of extroverts, they are more inclined to you know, be persuaded by what other people think. But for introverts, we're more inward thinking. We like to create our own opinions and things like that. And so this allows us to be very, very creative. Overall, introverts make great friends. Being an introvert can actually help you build deeper relationships. It allows you to be independent, more thoughtful, and a lot of other things. I know I look sort of awkward in this picture, but I'm doing an uncomfortable thing by being on camera. And I think sometimes actually people think that you're more genuine if you're more introverted and shy and being on camera because you're sort of like less loud and less crazy. And a lot of people can sort of resonate with that. So I really think that's helped me out with my content. I think that most people that watch my content know that, you know, I'm not the most extroverted person out there. I definitely seem more extroverted while on camera like this versus in real life. But yeah, it has definitely helped me out with my career. Okay, so step two, you guys, is to find an extroverted friend. I know this is sort of like a weird step and you might be thinking like, what's the ultimate goal of this? But basically it's gonna lead to more friendships and a bigger network. If you're wondering, yes, I've had extroverted friends my entire life. I've understood just how important having extroverted friends is. And if I were to only have introverted friends, you guys, uh, my network would be so much smaller during my life. And so yeah, I really owe a lot to my extroverted friends. Okay, so let's go through a slideshow of some of my friends that have really helped me and how they've helped me. So this is Carlton. I think I met him two, three years ago. And you guys, if you know Carlton, he is way more extroverted than me. He's introduced me to so many different people. He's introduced me to so many different topics in business that I am now super interested in. And yeah, just one example of someone that has really changed my life and yeah, he's super extroverted. This is my friend, John. We became friends, I believe in seventh grade. And he really is one of the reasons why I made a good amount of friends, both in middle school, as well as high school. So yeah, we were best friends. I made a lot of my other friends through him. He's very, very extroverted. I was even more introverted back then, but somehow like we were able to really get along. And then this is Jeff and Jason. So these are two other friends that I recently made. Jeff I'd say is quite extroverted. Jason's a little bit more introverted, but he has a lot of really good connections. And I've met so many really cool friends and people through them. And yeah, it was only possible because, you know, I met them, befriended them, and they sort of introduced me to the people that they knew. I'll say that for step two, it's not just about finding an extroverted friend and then leaving it at that, right? It's actually about expanding your network and then finding people that push you towards success. So everyone I showed you earlier, they have helped me in some way. They've become a great friend, someone that I can hang out with, but they've also introduced me to different people, different ideas, as well as held me accountable for a lot of different things. If you are a very introvert and have a hard time time making friends with people, especially strangers, and having a few extroverted friends is really, really going to help you. This is also how I've met so many people in the gym, right? It's not just because I go out there and shake everyone's hand that works out. It's because I work out with people that are more extroverted. They introduce me to their friends and that is sort of how that connection is made. Here's some more examples of things that happened due to my extroverted friends. But yeah, overall, when you have extroverted friends and you do things with them, this allows you to put yourself in social situations where you can meet new people. If you can be kind to them, give them some some type of value and be a good friend, then they will give you value in return. But yeah, you guys are in luck because with social media and different websites out there, it's so much easier now to network and make new friends. And I'll say I've made a lot of good friends online that eventually turn into personal friendships where we actually hang out in person. So yeah, definitely take advantage of this, especially if you are in a more remote area of the world and can't get access to people that you want to surround yourself with. So step three is to learn improv concepts. You guys probably are thinking, Charlie, what the heck is an improv concept? Do you want me to like go up on a stage and act and stuff like that? And while yes, that is beneficial, it's not necessary. I haven't done that yet, but I have spent time learning concepts of improv that really do help with everyday life. So this is a book that I read recently. It's very, very good, but the concepts that Chad, the uh, author goes through are super, super eye-opening. And I really do think that if you're introverted, learning things like this can really help you get out of your shell and build more confidence in social situations. Improv isn't just about you know, improv acting, right? It also includes things that build your repertoire of social skills. So beyond buying that book, taking notes and learning everything in that book, you guys can do things like voice lessons, you can do theater, you can play music, you can do sports, chess club, Toastmasters, student clubs, mastermind groups, really the list goes on. Yes, being in social situations helps you become a better social person, but also you wanna know the fundamentals about what you're doing, what works. And so reading a book like the one that I mentioned that is 
extremely, extremely helpful. I'm such a noob when it comes to improv, acting, and stuff like that. So reading that book was definitely one of the most enlightening things I've done within the past year. And yeah, I'd assume that most of you guys don't know that much about improv or acting. So I highly, highly recommend learning those improv concepts. You don't need to buy that book if you don't want to. You can also learn online. Just look up how to do improv. And there's gonna be so many different resources, YouTube videos that you guys can learn from. Overall, we're learning to think on our feet. We're learning to build social confidence. And yeah, that's just super, super important if you're an introvert. I wanna touch on one improv concept that you guys will learn, and that is the yes, and. So this is an improv principle that involves building on each other's ideas. I know a lot of introverts that are thinking, well, if I mess up and say the wrong thing or I blank out or, you know, do something that's, you know, not good. Well, in improv, the whole thing is you want to go with the yes and. So whatever someone says, you need to build on that. And so when you think of it like that, nothing is actually wrong and everything is helping us move the scene forward. Here's a link to a website that has 101 improv tips. I'll also leave this down in the description for you guys to check out. And yeah, I know it's scary, but improv is so, so useful. I really hope one day I can get the courage to actually attend an in-person improv class because that's entirely different than just learning these concepts at home. But for now, if you guys don't want to do that, just learn the concepts and apply them to your own life. Okay, so step four is to actually build a business doing something that you as an introvert love doing and sort of tying along with that is going to be learning sales. Introverts, they succeed at a lot of different jobs, but what matters is that you feel good every day doing that job. So if you look up what jobs are good for introverts, there's going to be a ton of different things, right? It's basically going to list every single job out there. What I've done personally in my own life as an introvert is doing service-based businesses. So yeah, for me, I did photo and video for over a decade. Here's a photo I took of, you know, like 30 plus dancers at UCLA. So when you put yourself in situations like this, yes, you do have to get very comfortable being around a lot of people that you might not know well. Here's another photo I took of a sorority at UCLA. Yes, I had to direct like over 50 different girls. And doing something like this is actually not very nerve wracking at all. You're shielded by your camera. You don't feel like you're performing. And I think that doing a service-based thing like this is especially in a high value skill is gonna be one of the best things that most introverts can do. Like I mentioned earlier, you wanna practice interacting with people and working on your communication and sales skills. Sales is tough. But fun fact, introverts are actually really good at certain types of sales. And another fun fact, everything in life is gonna be sales. For example, your relationships, uh, your professional life, your personal life, they all involve sales. Instead of thinking of sales as, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, calling people, cold calling, all that stuff, think of sales as people skills. So you're not only selling a product, you're selling yourself, you're selling your services. And yeah, you guys should realize that everything in life is related to sales. Introverted people are actually really good at connecting to other people. So if you did want to probably do, you know, cold calling and stuff like that, you'd probably be good at it. It'd probably be very out of your comfort zone. But as an introvert, you're probably a very good listener. And that definitely does help when it comes to sales. As long as you can listen and ask questions, that is like 90% of your job. Now for me, I tried cold calling for one day when I was doing a lot of real estate and I absolutely hated it. And after that date, I realized, okay, maybe this is just not for me. I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life. And so I stopped and it took me a while to sort of come to terms with that and think, okay, like I just wasted a lot of money on the software and stuff like that. But yeah, eventually I was like, okay, it's just not for me. I'll focus on things that I can see my myself doing every single day. The main takeaway with this point is you want to build a business. You want to do something that you are good at, that you want to do. Seeing success like that actually helps you build a lot of confidence. And that confidence is of course going to make you feel more confident in life, go out and do more social things and just feel better about everything. Okay. So step five is to focus on what you're good at, AKA delegate certain tasks. For me, this was building a team. So this is a picture of Joey. He was my first ever like sort of full-time hire and hiring someone in person full-time. That was extremely, extremely scary. I would consider myself more of a natural solopreneur, meaning I like to do things myself. I don't like to manage people. And I sort of want to stay like a one man show. Well, I quickly realized that doing that creates a really big ceiling on your overall growth. And so without a doubt, building a team and delegating, that has been one of the best things I've ever done within the last two years. It's increased how much money I make. It's increased the amount of free time I have. And I think it just makes me a better overall person knowing how to deal with people and being able to manage a team effectively. So you're not going to be good at everything, right? It's really important that you guys start delegating and being okay, letting other people do stuff for you. For example, I was doing all of my edits for all of my YouTube videos back then. I really am not the best editor. There are so many better people than me. And so, yeah, that was one of the first tasks that I delegated. It's come to the point now where we have close to 10 people on our team. We have people that are super focused on one certain aspect of the business. I'm focused on coming up with good ideas, doing activities that move the business forward. And my team has been absolutely instrumental in actually making 
making sure all the things are getting done in a timely manner. Now, one book I really recommend you guys to read is Who Not How. This book rocks like I wrote right there. And the reason is because this really challenged the way I thought about building a business. Instead of thinking, how do I do this? How do we do this? We need to be asking the question, who can we actually get to do this for us? So when you think that way, you'll have better ideas, you'll have better collaborations, and your vision instantly becomes 10 to 100x bigger. If you guys want to get takeaways to books like this, I actually recommend signing up for my free Hustle Club newsletter. This is basically like a newsletter that teaches you how to become a better entrepreneur in three minutes or less. And yeah, in every single newsletter, we basically cover one book and go through my top takeaways. So yeah, that link is going to be down below in the description. Another great quote I really like is by Helen Keller. She said, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. That's really so true. And I really want you guys to take that to heart. All right, step six, you guys, is to be omnipresent. Omnipresent just means being everywhere. So if you look at the definition, it says widely or constantly encountered, common or widespread. When you increase your omnipresence, this is going to result in more opportunity. And when I say omnipresence, I mean both mentally as well as physically. All right, so let's talk about the mental omnipresence, right? This basically just means you are super intellectually curious. So basically for me, I spend hours per day learning. I look at forums, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, I read books, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So for example, when I was in high school and I wanted to learn photography, I spent hours per day on the photography on the net forums. I learned so much about photography on there and that really is the reason why I was able to do photography professionally. When I was looking to lease a car, I spent so many hours on the lease hacker forums. I learned about everything you need to know about finding good deals for leases, how they work, all the numbers and all that stuff. And as a result, I was able to get two amazing lease deals uh, on my BMW 3 Series as well as my i8 Roadster. And every day now, I spend time learning on YouTube. I read books. And yeah, you guys, the amount of free information out there is just absolutely crazy. Everything you guys want to learn about, it's going to be out there on the internet. And so you really don't have an excuse when it comes to not being well-informed and not having a lot of skills. Basically, the more things you think about, learn about, or try, the more lucky you'll get. So all the successes that I've had in my life have been because of a combination of all those things. I had some certain knowledge that I had to learn from actually going out there and seeking it. And then I actually tried doing it. So that is really what got me to where I am today. The more hobbies you have, the more opportunities you have to find your passions. For example, photography got me into video. Video got me into YouTube. Doing tutoring made me realize I like teaching things. And that led me to making educational content. Really, the list goes on, right? And then the more learning you do, the more understanding you'll have on how things work. And that in turn is going to allow you to actually identify ways to add value. And then the more content you're making, that's more like the physical omnipresent. That's going to result in more eyeballs, which is going to result in a personal brand and more leads for whatever business you're doing. Basically, that is how you get extremely lucky in life. You have the knowledge, you're constantly looking for different opportunities, you act on those opportunities, and it all comes full circle because you'll have the knowledge to actually effectively act on them. Step seven is to be more confident. So yeah, this is actually easier said than done, right? But when you break it down, there's actually so many different activities that you guys can start implementing today that will make you more confident. So first, let's look at some of the actions that I really recommend you guys implement into your life. First, do a morning routine. This actually really, really helps you build confidence. Have a journal, do free writing every single day, read different books, listen to audiobooks, listen to podcasts, do things when you tell yourself you're going to do something, right? By doing that, you're going to be like, okay, I actually did it. That's going to increase my own uh, self-confidence. That basically blends along with take action, right? You'll also want to stop comparing yourself to others. Know that everyone's on their own journey. So it really doesn't make any sense to compare yourself to someone that is well ahead of you in their journey. And then finally, know that you absolutely kick butt. Every human out there is amazing. They have different skills, different stories, different opinions, different priorities. And that's just basically what makes people human, right? Humans are awesome. You'll also want to hit the gym, you guys. I've been hitting the gym for what 15 years or something and it's really helped me build a lot of confidence in my body and myself having a better body also really helps other people's first impression of you which is extremely important and you guys it's just so fun right learn to love the gym and i guarantee you that's going to make your life a lot better so yeah this is a picture of me when i was super young and super super shy i'm in the bottom right corner looking at this kid that was obviously way more funny than me but just know you don't need to be that funny that extroverted that outgoing to live a really good and successful life you absolutely can be shy and achieve achieve things that extroverts could only dream of. Also, you guys, therapy helps seriously. It helps you understand your self-worth is intrinsic and it allows you to have a better inner dialogue. So yeah, how do all those different daily actions and routines help you build your confidence? Well, if you can say that you're doing these things and you can actually do them, then you'll think, whoa, I 
actually did this. I said I was doing it. And that momentum is going to carry on throughout the day and allow you to do more things that you know you might have difficulty doing. Step eight is something that we've sort of brushed on too, but that is to get out of your comfort zone a lot more. I'll say that introverts, they tend to have a smaller comfort zone that they really, really want to stay in, right? So in this video, I basically drew a circle around myself and I said that you no, know, most people, they like to stay within the circle. The thing is, if you stay within that circle, you can't explore, you can't go out. And the amount of opportunities coming into that circle, if it's small, is very, very limited. Now, in order to get better at getting out of your comfort zone, there are a bunch of things you guys can do. And it sort of boils down to just doing more uncomfortable things and just doing those consistently. For example, you guys, an ice bath. This is something that I've started doing within the last few months. It's very, very hard to go out there and force myself to get into a pool of water that's between like 40 to 50 degrees. It hurts, it's uncomfortable, but when you get out, you just feel so amazing. And that's just one way that I've been able to build more confidence in myself. Plus, if I can do something like that, then in relation to that, almost everything is easy. The truth is that most good or great parts of your life will be because you got out of your comfort zone. Staying at home, playing games, staying in your comfort zone like that. Yes, that's going to be an okay life, but nothing good or great or amazing is ever going to happen there. For me, everything great that has happened in my life has been because I got out of my comfort zone. For example, filming myself for social media, going on my first date with my now girlfriend, making my first hire, and even cold calling, which actually made me just realize I don't want to cold call. <laughs> greater discomfort equals greater confidence and all these factors allow us to live a more successful and fulfilling life if you guys haven't seen yes theory it's a channel that i am absolutely obsessed with their whole thing is to seek discomfort and i think that is uh, something that you guys should really take away from this video also read this book you guys can't hurt me by david goggins before i couldn't take cold showers but after i read that book cold showers were no problem and then also the miracle morning this is a book that really changed my life it made me start to implement a morning routine which led to more confidence and momentum for my days so i want to end this presentation by just saying you guys are unstoppable if you put your mind to it introverts are awesome i have no doubt that every single one of you guys watching this video can succeed and i just really hope that sharing my story and sharing the different things we covered in this presentation will sort of make you think okay hey i have everything it takes to be successful even though i'm shy it's all good and i can still build an amazing life just like Charlie has. If even just a handful of you guys watch this video, start implementing these things and start building your dream life, then it'll all be worth it. Anyways, I really, really appreciate your time. I know that was a long video. Yeah, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of it. If you guys have any other friends that are introverted, consider sharing this video with them. And yeah, it'd also be awesome if you guys could click that like button, comment your biggest takeaway, and then also subscribe for more content just like this. I make 10 videos about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thanks so much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.